why would God create our brains to have this distinct ability to be able to tell a fake human from a real human? Hey, this is Unrefined Podcast. I'm Brandon Spain, your host, with co-host Lindsay Waters. Welcome to another episode. Hey, 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 everybody. Coming at you with another podcast. Uh, Lindsay, what's on the agenda today? What are we talking about? We are going to talk about the very broad subject of the doppelganger, doubles. Um, I mean, you can just go so many directions, and we're going to go in plenty of them and have a good time. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely going to be an, an unrefined podcast, not just us just having a goo at it, but also just the topic of uh, something that's interested us and we thought it'd be neat to dive into and and just share with you some of the insights that we got when we were researching it and, and reading and studying and listening. So, Lindsay, I guess we need to start off probably with, there for everybody, a working definition of what is a doppelganger and maybe, you know, what are some of the other things that are called doppelgangers that really aren't? What do you think? How should we start this off? Well, it's... I, I guess I'd start by just saying it's not that old of a term. Middle of the 19th century, that's not very old as, as words no, go. Not at all. Um, Mid-19th century is what I got here. And it literally, it's a German word that means double goer or double walker. Now, don't make this mistake, you guys out there, and think that it's a new phenomenon. It's just a no, new name. No. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. particular name, the, the 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 folklore goes way back. Several yeah. different cultures, and even in the Bible. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you got your your more apparitional, I'll call them, phantasmal doubles, but then you got some that are seem to be a little, and even we've got some what pur- are purported to be true stories of uh, more flesh and blood type doppelganger entities. So, yeah. It even reaches into celebrities and uh, famous people. I, I guess I could, I'd rather say famous people than celebrities, but like Abraham Lincoln and what was it? Uh, the Tsarina Catherine? Uh, yeah. Catherine the Great. Catherine the Great. And- had one Russia. on her phone, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and, and we'll get into that later in the show. So uh, there's, yeah, it's it's a deep, dark um, dive. And it was interesting when Lindsay and I were doing the research on this, I would come up with interesting connections, too. And I'm going to throw those out there. Now, keep in mind, you guys, we were kind of attacking this from a, a standpoint of we want to look at it from a, a rational sense what i call more of a scientism sense you know uh empirical touch taste spell science so-called uh sense and look at some of that phenomena but also from the the definitely since that's what we're all about a a supernatural viewpoint so yeah spirit doubles isn't that what it means in the german spirit doubles or double walkers or something like that what it was walker double goer in in german mythology or mythos or whatever they were malevolent right i mean they were generally a a dark omen most of the time you generally if nothing else it was seen as if it was more the apparition kind oftentimes it was seen as this omen like something bad's gonna happen if you see it yeah yeah Um, it's just on the more malevolent flesh and blood side of it you have the whole changeling Mm, folklore that that ties into this um the english called them oofs that's where we get the term oof from some point that meant a big not too intelligent person but i think that comes from this idea of the elves leaving these sort of blank creatures and kidnapping a baby 
Uh, the, the, the word oaf comes from the word elf originally. The Irish had a similar being called the fetch, I think. Hmm. And it, it, yeah, it just, it's all over the place. Well, and then you, you, you can even, let's fast forward this to some of the podcasts to some of the people out there that we're in community with that we've listened to and stuff like that. Some of the, you know, clones. I mean, this could even be possibly a, uh, a cloning situation could be considered yeah. a dop a doppelganger is basically a, a a human being that's been made without a god breathed spirit, but there's some some sort of spirit that occupies it, you know, whether it be a demonic or or whatever, and that could very well fit into this whole double walker genre as well too. So oh, yeah. it, it yeah. it's uh it's it's truly a a fascinating topic. I think what got me really interested in, into it is I would listen to some, to believe it or not, to help me sleep sometimes at night, I'd listen to this podcast out there, Let's Read, Hat Tip to Let's Read. And they they would have several, he would uh, have several stories from Reddit, you know, about doppelgangers. Of course, you know, Reddit's a mixed bag. You don't ever know what's real, what's not, and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he, he, I think he tries to discern through a lot of them and determine how possibly true they could be but the, the the just the fascinating stories that i would hear about you you're standing next to yourself at the bed and then also you know it's it's, it's sort of a interesting experience that my wife had that i think we've talked about on the show that that she yeah. was kind of at the foot of our bed and she woke up and she like kind of went back into herself And, uh, so, you know, we have kind of personal interest in this as well. Mm -hmm. What, what, what interests you about doppelgangers, Lindsay? Well, I think I just, the earliest, my earliest exposure to that term, I think was, I used to play this video game with my brother called Maximum Carnage and there was a Marvel, I didn't read comic books, so yeah, but there was a character on there called doppelganger and I Mm -hmm. just always thought it was a funny sounding word, but. I mean, yeah, there's been several movies about it that have kind of... I haven't seen it yet, but that Us movie kind of touches on this. There was a doppelganger movie with Drew Barrymore in the 90s. Yeah, what what movie was that? You remember? Yeah, it was just called Doppelganger. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the same premise, like, this girl gets replaced by this evil double. Hmm. It's more of a changeling type thing. And I watched the movie Changeling in the 2000s, which... Yeah, I remember that movie. Really yeah. touch, I mean, it wasn't really doppelganger per se in some supernatural sense, but it had kind of that. And there's a similar story we're going to talk about from France later related to this. But it was just this idea that this woman's son went missing and they tried to pass this kid off who kind of looked like him as her son. I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they played on they they kind of used, you know, they they kind of played off the the whole doppelganger changeling uh, folklore. Just kind of used it. This is a true story, but yeah. Well, it fascinates me that the, I mean, you could even, as a matter of fact, while I was studying for this and talking with different people, you can even dive into the whole world of twins with this type of situation. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's just fascinating. Twins in the Bible, twins. Um, I, I thought about the, the, the God, was it Janus, the double yeah. God. And, uh, so there's, there's just, and then just contemporary, uh, movies, contemporary films, uh, ranging from the parent trap back in the, uh, <laughs> well, I watched one back in the seventies. I think there's it was with, with Haley Mills. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that but that seems to be a real common motif with this this switching, and we've always had a fascination with twins and doubles and and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I think that comes into play to this whole doppelganger. But yeah, imposters who are fascinated by imposters. Yeah, I mean, yes, that's uh, somebody coming in and tricking people into thinking they're somebody they're not. That that's something that catches our attention. The prince and the pauper. <laughs> this reminds me of something my son and I have been talking about, and I think you and I, Lindsay, have talked about it too. Is the whole the whole concept of the uncanny valley, and 
let me unpack mm-hmm. that. that. That's um, in evolution speak, uh, the uncanny valley is basically a uh, an ability that our brain has that that it, it it can only reach a certain point where it can determine whether a human being is truly a human being, and uh, it's just it's really a fascinating thing. Of course, that you know I believe in creation. But on either side here, even evolution or or creation, you know, why would our brain, number one, evolve into anything? That's my big question. But number two, on the creation side, why would God create our brains to have this distinct ability to be able to tell a fake human from a real Mm -hmm. human? You know, all these different stories of these doppelgangers. You know, I think about the the one of the ones that that started me out was the one with Emily Sage, who is in Latvia, and her story just fascinated me because she was she went through so many different schools and they couldn't figure out why such a great candidate was going through all these different schools and gave it a few months and they figured out why she had a double. And what was so interesting about this case is it was seen by many. It wasn't just yeah. seen by the person. Because I've heard scientists say, well, they have something wrong with their brain. They're, they're having a delusion, and then they die from that. And that's why the, the bad omen of seeing your doppelganger. But that doesn't explain how a whole classroom of students see a double. And the behavior of the double is definitely not very human-like. It's, very, it's almost like it's an echo of, yeah. of the person. Mm-hmm. And there's one story about her. She was, she went to work in the garden at the school, and soon she came back in the classroom and relieved the substitute. And she was sitting there, and just they were just they were speaking to her, and she was just sitting there and staring. And then they realized that this was probably not the real teacher. So they looked out the window, and she was still down there in the garden doing her gardening stuff. And it was kind of connected. And this is what I'm going to bring in in a few minutes. It was kind of connected. They would see the double where Emily really wanted to be. She didn't want to be out in the garden. She wanted to be in the classroom in her knitting or in her sewing class. And so that's where the doppelganger showed up was in her sewing class, which I find that really interesting. It's like it had an intention of will to it, an intent behind it. Connected, I mean, places she wanted to be. Wonder if it wasn't some weird kind of psychological projection or something like that. I mean, it. Well, that leads to the whole. This sounds more flesh and blood. This doesn't sound like an apparition. No, it's not. That's that's the only thing that about what I'm about to say that that kind of kind of put pokes holes and 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 it is. uh, I've kind of in 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 the research began to wonder if people are doing astral projection and not realizing it, that they're projecting their spirit or some, some form of their soul spirit, whatever. uh, And they're not realizing it with the intent of, you know, just feeling a strong way. Now, I don't know how that comes to play with, I don't know how many of these people are really genuinely born again, Christians and, and et cetera, et cetera, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I know my, I know my wife was, and she had that interesting experience at with the with, with herself at the end of the bed. Mm-hmm. So, uh yeah, that's that's what I love about where we are in this fringe is there's there's a lot of gray. I I tell people oftentimes that God sees everything black and white. He sees everything perfectly, but yeah. humans in our fallen state as much as I to my chagrin you know, don't want to say this, uh you know, there is a lot of gray in the world. There's a lot of uh, overlapping areas that we, particularly evangelical Christians, we want to come out with a a, a, a Loctite system that explains everything. Yeah, and every, we come out. Every yeah, hill we, is a hill to die on, too. Yeah, and 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 we become, we come we come out more like Pharisees than we do like you know seekers of the of Jesus or seekers of the truth. And anyway, back to what I was saying. There, there's just a lot of gray in a lot of this area. I'm beginning to wonder if a lot of this is some sort of an astral projection type situation. And I investigated that. And even some of the new age out there have sort of connected doppelgangers with uh, astral projection and that kind of stuff. But that doesn't explain the flesh and blood. That doesn't no, explain doesn't. The, doesn't. the ones that have been touched and even talked to. 
Yeah. You know? Well, we may as well ring up Pauline, little Pauline Picard. Yeah. Brittany yeah, go Friend, there. 1922. Is that okay? Yeah, go. Go for it. Okay, so Pauline Picard. I guess I want to give Weird Darkness some, some credit here. I, I was just exposed to this one from Darren Marlar, and just a great voice actor. He has a podcast and just puts out something every day, man. He works hard. He's got a great speaking voice. And a lot of his, he's a curator. He, he finds great stories. Most of them, unless he says otherwise, are purported to be true. And I found this one listening to his podcast. But but yeah, Pauline Picard was a, was a little girl in the Brittany region of France, and she spoke the Breton language, which is a kind of a rare language in France. Some of them call it a dialect. My understanding was it was a separate language. Yeah, me too. But, like a close to Celtic or Gaelic. Yeah, it, it's in Welsh. But, but anyway, so she goes missing on April 6th. Playing outside, police look for her to no avail. Um, they assumed, I mean, <laughs> the usual stuff back then. Animal killed her, she was kidnapped by gypsies. Sadly, they didn't <laughs> care much for those Romani people back then. Um, yeah, and yeah, they just they just assumed she was dead or, or kidnapped and they'd never seen her again. Well, and there were some suspects. Uh, there was a guy named Christophe Caramon who had been in prison for some some bad things. Uh, he had visited the farm on April 6th and paid particular attention to her, apparently. Got arrested. Didn't have an international passport. Uh, there was a guy also who apparently confessed to it later. Um, well, that comes later, though. Finish yeah, the rest yeah, of the yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so she goes missing in April, April 6th. About a month later, the police uh, notify her family that they found a little girl in Cherbourg, up in Normandy, about 250 miles or so away, 400 kilometers. I mean, this was a big story in the local the Le Matin paper there. And, yeah, the, the little girl looked like her. I mean, they, they took a photo of her and showed it to her parents. And not only her parents, but the whole family and everybody in the little town were fully convinced that this was the girl. The problem that's, was... That's significant right there, that even yeah. the neighbors, not just the family. Yeah. Yeah. Problem was, the little girl could no longer speak Breton and didn't seem to recognize her family. And, you know, the ex explanation was, well, trauma can do that to you. Well, sadly and tragically, later on, a corpse was found with clothing that was identified as little Pauline's dress or clothes, whatever she had been wearing that day. I mean, it was it was pretty rough, but the clothes were unmistakably hers. So, yeah, they figured out, okay, well, this can't be our daughter, and they sent her to a foundling. It's kind of sad. She died of measles a few years later. Mm. Um, and yeah, so, but again, this little girl, everyone was convinced that this this girl they found was her. You know, you could say, well, moms, the mom may have lost it. Who knows how we would act if we lost a child? But man, the whole family and the whole town. Yeah, particularly the, the neighbors. Yeah, that that blows that that whole theory out of the water that the neighbors recognized her. You know, yeah. they they're not they're not going th undergoing the same trauma that the parents or the the mother yeah. was. You know. So yeah, man, that's just. Well, and, and that's also. That's also the time when the guy came out of the woodwork. I wonder if he really did kill her because he came yeah. out and he flipped out because here, here she is, and he probably thought she came back to haunt her or something like Heath that. Martin you know, was his name. He, uh, yeah, 
he was asking about her and then just kind of broke down and said, God help me, I'm guilty. Um, and he was institutionalized later. Yeah. So maybe he did. And maybe, maybe he, did. he did. And there's still maybe some entity feeds off of trauma like that. And either way, um, the, the foundling, whoever she was, she, she sadly died sometime after that of, of a diesel's epidemic. So yeah, that's a flesh and blood. This wasn't an apparition. This was a yeah, little flesh girl and blood. that you could touch and she could talk and apparently had personality too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And another odd thing is apparently after she went to the orphanage, now you could argue, well, maybe they just taught her the language, but she could speak whole sentences in that Breton language afterwards. Interesting. It seemed like she picked it up pretty fast. And it may be, I've always heard kids learn languages faster. So, it may, I mean, that may be the They do. Yeah, they do. That's always in the West. That's always our go to thing. That, that's what I've noticed about myself. I always want to go for a rational scientism explanation for everything. And yep. if I don't do, if I don't do that first, I'm not, I'm not skeptical enough, you know, according to the world, which is predominated with scientism at least for now. And, you know, it, it, and, and we need to, we need to be open to the supernatural that, uh, that, that these things are real, that these things exist, these things happen, particularly as Christians. Like I heard the argument, I don't remember who was, who was saying it, but that, you know, we believe in a resurrection. We believe in a virgin birth. We believe in all these miraculous things, but you know, why can't we believe in yeah. others? While all of a sudden is, does our supernatural just kind of, drop off when it comes to, I mean, there's theological reasons I'm not going to get into, but, but why does the supernatural just drop off? You know, why can't other things have been just as real or just as supernatural? I wanted to share a little bit, uh, if I could, Lindsay, about some of the history of the doppelganger. I, I found, I found, yeah, I found this really interesting. It, it, it's in numerous cultures, but one that really intrigued me is what it was in Islam. Except it's called a, I'm, I'm not going to say it right. It, it's, it looks like a Karen, which, haha, <laughs> ironic. <laughs> it's a Karen, but, but it's a, probably a Karen. That'd and, be an interesting uh, horror movie. The Karen. Yeah, the the doppelganger Karen. Karen. But, but in Islam, the doppelganger is always the opposite sex. Oh, if wow. A male has a female. It goes along with a lot of that. I guess that's probably a lot of Zoroastrianism of the yin and oh, yeah. yang and the, and the black and the white and all that kind of stuff. So, but I thought that was fascinating. And then, you know, and then let's, let's dive into the Bible. I mean, there are some passages in the Bible that we can't seem to get an answer for. One for sure. I mean, the whole... Peter's angel thing that looked yeah. and sounded like him apparently, and uh, well, I read that they say in the Greek the word there if it would have been a ghost would have been phantasm. However, yeah. I kind of study the etymology out a little bit, and what happened over time is is they would even use the word angel for ghosts of people, uh. Because they didn't have, because uh, it, it wasn't like a, 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 I'm not, a, I'm butchering this, but it wasn't like a phantasm in the classic phantasm sense. And so that's also where we get some of our, I think, uh, some of the church traditionally, and probably the Catholic church gets this, this uh, theology of a guardian angel, that yeah. we have a, f a familiar angel that was with us or whatever, but, but it comes right into play with the whole doppelganger thing of of there is apparently a space in Jewish literature and Jewish uh, I would say mythology Jewish uh, beliefs of of having a spirit double 
yeah. um, that they they called angelos in the Greek. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it would be in the Hebrew or Aramaic. That's one case. And the whole case of Jesus walking on the water, and they said, "Oh, is it his?" phantasm they use actually yeah. use the word ghost there and i don't want to get into the whole conversation of ghosts that's a, another whole topic and we might dive into that later on or whatever but there's there's good stuff out there that deals with ghosts in the bible and it's just yeah. not quite as black and white as people would love for it to be yeah um, and i i'll just leave it there but uh you know his his double is where we came up with the whole Peter's double is the whole aspect of, of guardian angels. Um, yeah. And I thought about it. She didn't actually see him. She just heard him at first. That's true. That. Yeah, that's true. But still they, they seem to say, well, this is, yeah, it's not him. It's his angel. Well, and we have a whole host of other cryptids, which for those of you who don't know what a cryptid is out there, a cryptid is just um, a entity that is not uh, that we haven't really discovered their nomenclature yet, or what their species is. If it is a species, if it's not supernatural, and cryptids usually have a supernatural connotation to it. But uh, there, in dealing with cryptids, there's oftentimes many of them, and Lindsay could probably name a few that have this ability to be able to speak and talk in other... Some even say Bigfoot can do that, that they can speak and talk or use a well, I'm different town. I'm not town. familiar with that. And, yeah, uh, and I think the other one, another one's a rake, maybe, possibly, uh, but they can use... There's a, there's a really frightening story that I heard on Let's Read about a hunter who was out in the woods, and he was trying out his new night goggles um, out out in the woods, and he wouldn't see anything, so he moved to another spot. And he looked back at the spot he was at, and he saw this weird creature. And it stood up, and he was he was just staring at it and trying to figure out what it was. And it started crying out like a woman in distress, and started talking to him. And he saw what it was. It was talking. He knew it wasn't a woman in distress because he could see it through his night goggles. Mm-hmm. And uh, he shot at it, and it it ran. And anyway, he ended up fleeing, and and which rightly so, I would too. That was just a, that story is kind of a terrifying type story. But it, but I, my whole point of bringing that story in is that there's cryptids out there that can imitate. So that goes back to the whole Peter thing. Um, familiar spirits imitate sometimes. And you can make the argue. I've also heard the argument. Maybe that was just a Jewish superstition, and it may have been. Might have been. Yeah. I mean, we have to explore all. If we're gonna, if we're pursuing the truth, and I really feel like I, uh, I mean, there. I, I will admit, everything inside of me wants to believe the supernatural, and I do believe the supernatural, and I embrace yeah. the supernatural. However, but I want the truth, and yeah. not every case of supernatural is really supernatural. I mean, yeah. there's hoaxes, there's there's the fall of man, there's deception, there's stuff like that out there. But in that small percentage that don't meet that criteria, you know, scientists can't explain it uh, in their rational thought processes. Yeah. Well, this is a good time then to talk about some possible... I, I found some... Some more, I guess, scientific yeah, yeah good um, time. discussions about this kind of thing. There's this, this term, well, I'll start with the, the other term. It's called cutoscopy. Um, and it's, 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 it's a sort of a subcategory of a larger subject called autoscopy, which just means uh, literally what it sounds like to see oneself. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Of course, autoscopy can be everything from like out of body experiences, um, near death experiences yeah, type stuff. Yeah, you know, astral projection type. I mean, right. You know what would happen to Sandy would fall under that. In fact, I'd say what happened to Sandy probably falls more under cutoscopy. But cutoscopy is literally you see a double of yourself outside of yourself while you're still awake. Hmm. Um, 
and some of the explanations are epilepsy and schizophrenia people who who have issues with this yeah i've heard the schizophrenia that's what a lot of scientism wants to yeah. project it you know is schizoid behavior paranoid well, schizophrenia there's, a, there's at least one case um this a, a swiss neuropsychologist i guess you'd call him named peter Bruger. B-R-U-G-G-E-R, if anybody's interested, looking him up, um, wrote about a case and uses the term polyopic coitoscopy, where this guy who had a tumor in the insular region of his temporal lobe saw five doubles of himself. And mm. they said that, of course, they, they said that it was the, the tumor. Now, me and you are more liable to think, well, why couldn't that have been? Why couldn't it have been both? Even maybe tumors can open doors to the the supernatural. I mean, who knows? But yeah, I just thought that was. We know drugs do, and oh, yeah. that's that could be another topic on another podcast we're going to do. But we know just the induction of drugs can introduce you to the spirit realm. I mean, and you can't, oh, yeah. you can't, you know, that's that's the the natural influencing the supernatural. We are bodies and we do engage with our spirits in the supernatural. Yeah. So that tumor could have just as easily been pushing on the right part of the brain to, for him to be, have open, open sight to what's really going on in the spiritual world, you know? Yep. Uh, I was in the process of looking up the astral projection and one of the, the things that they, they tend to, the three basic things that will allow you to do astral projections, which we don't condone. No, no, I want to say that right out of the shoot. Um, no. Yeah, that's to us, that's entering in the spirit world without, without the Holy spirit, which is illegal procedure and probably will be an open door for demonic familiar spirits or or just the demonic world yeah. in general. However, in this in the world of scientism and even kind of overlapping into the world of new age, the three basic things are meditation. And when I say meditation, I don't really mean biblical meditation or uh, more of an emptying of your mind type Eastern meditation. Yeah. Um, trance walk or trance work development and then psychotropics and that's what i wanted to dive into with the psychotropics and the possibility of it with astral projection dmt is the big one that they're actually doing scientific studies on to see if it could help with anxiety and depression and stuff like that however at the same yeah. time uh what is that uh the south american plant that they get a lot of this yeah ayahuasca. ayahuasca and and so you know that could come into play, so to speak, with the whole astral projection slash doppelganger type situation. Uh, and it could be that, like we said when we opened up this podcast, it, it very well could be that there are different variations of doppelgangers, which we don't mm -hmm. want to just put them all in one category. Um, you have no idea what they all are or anything. It was just something we were, we were wanting to look at. And, you know, and I just get tired of uh, most Christians just categorizing anything they don't understand into the demonic. And I'm not saying that it's godly, but I, I'm saying that there's, there's a little more wiggle room than just saying it's a demon. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, that's that's so lazy sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's lazy thinking. It's lazy thinking, which well, you know people don't I, even I, know what a demon is. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then another one we were talking earlier about things, natural things, mm -hmm. simple brain damage. You know, and that and that mm -hmm. leads into the two stories I want to tell. Uh, kind of of the celebrity, so to speak, of of experiencing. The first one is Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was said to, during his first um, term as president, was said to have been looking in a mirror, and he looked in the mirror, and the on the other side of him was a ghastly doppelganger of himself sitting there. It was very taunt and and 
and, you know, very fatigued looking and all that kind of stuff. And, and it shook him up. It shook him up enough. And he went to Mary Todd, which we all know Mary Todd. If you don't, you need to know was heavily mixed up in, I don't know. I don't know if I, I would say, yeah, I would say a cult, but I don't think it was more a cult than it was just simple spiritualism because of the loss of Robert, their son. And she wanted very much to communicate, but she had an interest. I wouldn't say she was an an occultist or a witch or anything silly like that, but, but she was very into, you know, possibly even Blavonsky stuff. And, and, and I guess they lived in the same time period. So, but, but, but more the theosophy type. Either Uh, way, she was, yeah, communicating with, with, yeah, she was trying to communicate with the dead, which is, you know, illegal in the Bible. So, but she prophesied or used divination to basically tell her husband that, you know, you're going to, you're going to get elected for a second term, but you're not going to make it through it. You're going to die before your second term. And the irony of that is that that came to, that came to pass. And she drew that conclusion from that experience with that doppelganger, which is, um, it's fascinating. You guys, I mean, call it for what it is, a coincidence or something supernatural at work. Yeah. Sooner or later, your coincidence card gets overplayed. Yeah. I mean, I even say, and, and I'm sure a lot of science, scientism people would disagree with this, I even say there is no such thing as coincidence. Well, yeah. I mean, to I an extent. At some point, I mean, it, it just becomes denial, I would say. Yes, yes. And and it's like I was dealing with somebody this week. We were, we were having a discussion about healing, and, and I wanted just to ask the, the person, you know, what is it inside of you that is so against wanting to believe that God is good enough to want to heal people? Yeah. You know, what is that What is that denial in there? And don't tell me it's because it's not in Scripture, because that's a smokescreen. What is it in there? You know, it, it just... It just makes me wonder why do why do people not want to believe in the goodness of God? All right, I'm chasing a rabbit here. I need to. But that that goes with the, that goes with the supernatural. What is it about you? And 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 I think with the supernatural is fear. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've even heard good Christians on some of these podcasts that, and I'm not so sure. Uh, I wouldn't experience this that that have experienced these cryptid encounters or, or things. And I mean, they're, we're talking about big, brave special ops dudes, you know, and stuff that, that are just befoozled with fear. And I, I mean, people always say, Oh, well, I want to see a Bigfoot or I want to see a blank fill in the blank or what. I don't know. Do you, I mean, really, I mean, yeah. that's, it could be a frightening experience. I mean, we really don't know what those creatures are or, or what their purpose is. And it's definitely not, to glorify God, probably. Well, even good beings. I mean, think about angelic encounters in the Bible. Yeah. How frightening that is. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a hard time sometimes with people who are just like buddies with angels and just, you know, yeah. they're sitting they're sitting on the couch with their arm around an angel saying, hey, what's up, dude? You know, that, that kind of stuff. Uh I mean, ordering them around, and yeah, yeah, and, but I could see an, an intimate relationship with angels, but but some of it just it can sound a little far fetched, just because it's just not, it doesn't go in line with the Bible. The the yeah. people were petrified when they encountered angels in the Bible if they figured out what they were. Sometimes they wanted to fall down and worship them. Sometimes they were scared to death. Which the angel, unless it was a, I believe a appearance of christ in the old testament the angel yeah angel of the lord yeah they always like fear not yeah so uh, another example of in history is the one i told you about about catherine the great mm-hmm. she was retiring for the evening in her bedchamber and some soldiers came and said you know, like my queen, there's somebody that's sitting on your throne that looks just like you. And so she went into the throne room and there she was sitting on the throne and she ordered them to fire, shoot at it. And it disappeared. And she died two weeks later of a uh, stroke. See, and 
you know, that that's where the scientists can come in and say, see, it was a brain malfunction. But but how do you explain the soldiers coming to her and seeing it too? Yeah. I mean, did, did they all have brain malfunctions? Was it in yeah. the water? I mean, yeah. you know, sometimes it almost gets, it gets far fetched to believe in science. I mean, yep. we've lived, we've lived through several years of that. Even now it, it just becomes science is like stretching, you know, it's trying to really stretch, you know, to, to offer an explanation when, when the easiest Occam's razor, the easiest explanation is just, Hey, it's supernatural. We yeah. live in a supernatural world. That's, it's all around us and and we need to have eyes to see well yeah i mean it's funny because physics has always blurred the lines to me between the natural and the supernatural so oh yeah particularly quantum physics oh yeah it's hard to just i mean you can believe that but you can't believe in a creator god or Spirit or things like that. I mean, come on. Well, well, you know, and, and and there's an argument that can be made. Like I've always heard that if you carried a a, a cigarette lighter back 500 years to the medieval period and lit it, they would think it was magic. Oh, and yeah. so that so I wonder sometimes, like even with quantum mechanics or quantum physics and and if that kind of stuff, if if we're just starting to dive into what I call the laws of God you know, or the laws of supernatural that, that are really there. They've been there and people have operated them. However, we hadn't really had a clear indication of, of, of what they are, you know, yep. it, that that's still supernatural. It's above the natural. It's more like supranatural is what it is. I know people get a lot of flack for this, but I do believe that there are spiritual laws out there. I believe the Bible teaches spiritual laws not maybe not as far as some heretics went like swedenborg and some other people yeah but there but there are spiritual laws out there that operate and i think a lot of people shy away from that because of their latent meticulous sovereignty um like i guess worldview you know, and I'm not going to unpack that in this episode. That's another whole rabbit and episode, but the, but just to believe that there's secondary causes and that God doesn't necessarily cause everything that happens just really blows a lot of people's fuses. And, uh, so, but there, yeah, there are ways to, there are laws. John Lake, a minister back in the early Pentecostal revival taught, a bunch and this was back before scientism really set in its place as the new religion of our of the west he he talked a lot about the science of the spirit which is fascinating to me you yeah. know we've gotten way off doppelgangers i'm <laughs> sorry well yeah we could talk about some more cases no i think i thought that was a good i think that it may touch lightly on this but it, it but it touches on it um, we could talk about some more of the, the sort of famous cases, I guess. There's a few yeah, more. Yeah, okay. Go poet for it. John Dunn or Don, I've heard that pronounced two different ways. The English poet apparently had, had a similar experience. And he says, I've seen a dreadful, or maybe his, he saw his wife's doppelganger, actually. I've seen a dreadful vision, he says, since I saw you. I've seen my dear wife pass twice by me through this room with her hair hanging about her shoulders with a dead child in her arms. And Don wow. reportedly said this to a witness. I cannot be sure that I now live than that I have not slept since I saw you and am as sure that her second appearing, she stopped and looked me in the face vanquished. Um, and then I, I believe his wife in the Walton, a, a, a messenger came later and um, to check, went and checked on Don's wife and uh, she was in poor health after losing a child. So, yeah. Hmm. Uh, then there's Goethe, the German, I guess he was a philosopher. Yeah. Riding on horseback to see his daughter and and apparently saw himself but dressed differently 
But then later on, without thinking about it, when he rode his horse down that same place, was wearing the same thing he saw his doppelganger wearing. So yeah, that's just crazy. That's that's almost like doppelganger meets time, some yeah. sort of a time well, time thing, there, you know. There, there, okay, so there was this. There was a the Norse had a sort of a doppelganger related deal called. Let me look it up. It's in the same article here. Yeah, this is really interesting. The Vardiger. Those Norse languages are crazy, so I'm not going to probably pronounce that. Right. Says, the Norse Vardiger was less ominous in nature, simply appearing in a place before the person it resembled, leading others to believe that they had already arrived. So that kind of, you touch on deja vu and all sorts of things there. That, yeah, yeah. Time and alternate realities. Yeah, this is more ethereal apparition, phantasm type territory than flesh and blood thing, but still. Well, do you have right there with you, you have the, the story of Shelley. I remember reading about the story of Shelley and his wife, too, you know, of Frankenstein fame, I want to add. They were, they, they weren't, they were occultist, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they were, well, he wrote a, it's interesting, he wrote a story called Prometheus Unbound, kind of a yes. lyrical drama play kind of thing. And yeah, when you're talking about modernists talking about Prometheus, there's often a Luciferian bent yes. to that. We'll get into that. But in this story, Prometheus is, you know, imprisoned as usual and talking to these nymph oceanids, these nymph creatures, and and one of them tells him about this being called the the Demogorgon from D and D, and I guess D and D and Stranger Things. Got this from there, I guess. Who yeah. dwells in this kind of the the undead realm, but it's a little bit different in Shelley's book. Kind of this shadow realm, and in this shadow realm, everybody, including Jupiter, you know, the the Latin Roman equivalent of Zeus, Zeus has yeah. sort of a, a double or a phantasm. He calls it, and and Prometheus calls up Jupiter's phantasm to get Jupiter's phantasm. To curse Jupiter, it's really weird, but yeah, I just thought that was interesting. You kind of got a got a doppelganger type deal in that story, and then he yeah. experienced it later. Yeah, but tell tell him the story about how he experienced what what happened with Shelley. I I can't remember the, all the details. Okay, well, I remember he he said a famous line that's that's reverberated through about. Yeah, well. Well, it says here his wife, Mary Shelley, later recalled that Percy had visions of strangling her and mentioned yeah. an episode in which his double approached him. All this was frightful enough, she said in a letter to her friend Maria Grisburn. And talking it over the next morning, he told me that he had many visions lately. He had seen the figure of himself, which met him as he walked on the terrace and said to him, How long do you mean to be content? Yes, that's it. How long do you mean to be content? Which is so, fascinating. Yeah. What does that mean? That's creepy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Just, just totally creepy. That's a tough question from anybody, especially your doppelganger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. I kind of have a... I, I kind of have a, a, an epiphany that I share with you that I'd like to share with them that we okay, were because we we did that episode on sleep paralysis and and uh, we're still studying and looking into that and everything and I find it fascinating. I wondered, you know, and this is just pure speculation, you guys. I mean, that's all we can do when it comes to the supernatural realm, other than you know what's biblically clear. Uh, I, I I've just wondered that if some of these people that are experiencing these dark figures in their mm-hmm. sleep paralysis, if those could possibly be their doppelgangers or, yeah. or something to that extent. I was just something I threw out there to Lindsay and he was like, wow, you know, that's, a, that, that's not something interesting that's to funny. think about. Yeah. That same uh, article references an, an Edgar Allan Poe. I just watched a movie about him. Um, the pale blue eye that I highly recommend. It was pretty good, but but Poe apparently wrote a story, I can't remember the name of it, where a guy's shadow kind of separates from him and 
and does its own thing. So yeah, that, that I thought of that when you when you mentioned that. Who wrote uh, Who wrote Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde? Who Who is that? Vern? No, Wells maybe. Well, I don't remember. Uh, I didn't even think about that. I can't believe it. Let me see. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Robert Louis Stevenson. Stevenson, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which, interesting enough, his whole, the way he used to get his stories is really a, a fascinating adventure in a, in a cult method, but we won't go there. But yeah, that, that whole dynamic of Jekyll and Hyde and, and some indications that doppelgangers are Jekylls and Hydes, you know, they're the opposite... Yeah. Um, you know, kind of like what I was talking about with Islam. I was talking about the 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 male female, but also the character of you know a, a Hyde type doppelganger versus or a Jekyll. Yeah. Anyway, I, I thought that was fascinating too. There's so much. There's so much out there on this topic. I mean, we 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 barely even scratched the surface. It, it could go yeah. so much deeper, and it ties into so much. Of the other cryptid stuff, uh, it makes you wonder, you know, what, what is it all for? What does it prove? What is it? But that that makes you wonder about any of the cryptid stuff. You know, why why are they here? We have some ideas, but why do we experience the things that we experience? You know, and science is, science can't explain all of it. No, just just be honest. Let's let's be for real. Let's not even let's half cut, of it. <laughs> let's cut it let's cut out the god complex and the arrogance of science and, and just and just realize that that there is a there's a world out there that that we that we can't even imagine it's it's permeated with the supernatural yep yep well that's that's about all we have here today about doppelgangers it, it's a topic that i hope other podcasters out there will explore and, and go deeper with and analyze because it's uh truly a fascinating topic so anyway you guys uh thank you so much for listening and we will see you on the other side thanks guys Thanks for listening and supporting us. And remember, stay naturally supernatural. Supernatural.